Yo, what's happening guys? It's Mac here from Cryptstar and I am super stoked. We are registering as a validator node for the Aleph Zero testnet. And uh, it looks like a rather, rather simple process. However, the file is huge. So while the file is downloading right now, I'm gonna go ahead and make this video for you guys talk about all the specs, the requirements that you need to go ahead and be a, a, a validator node for the Aleph Zero testnet. Now, just so you guys know, in the documentation, if you read through it, it does kind of talk about how they want to build a community and they want to make sure that all of their validator nodes are good actors. So participating now in the Aleph Zero testnet greatly increases your chance of being able to be one of the prime validator nodes for the LF0 mainnet when they open it up to external validator nodes. So let's go ahead and jump right into the documentation and get started with today's video. So yeah, now basically you can see here they have a few articles, staking and becoming a validator on LF0. How will it work? Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about the inflation schedule. I mean, it's just a normal inflation schedule that most uh, most networks have, most blockchains have. 10% inflation, uh, sorry, 90% inflation rewards will be distributed to validators and nominators. Okay, and it looks like the inflation is probably going to be about 10% I'm guessing so it's not too bad um, considering you know most that's that's pretty average for most blockchains right a thing to note about becoming a validator on Aleph zero mainnet you can see here a stake of 25,000 a zero is required so that's about $35,000 as the price right now so it's quite expensive to become a validator node on the Aleph zero network but it's not quite as expensive as some other blockchains and if you scroll down here if you're looking to become a validator, the community will be formed with a group of selected validators. Gradually, LF0 seeks to grow the committee size to 100 validators. So they're keeping the number of validators to pretty small, quite similar to Solana. I mean, this is a Solana killer. So they want to go ahead and scale up for the layer one solution and then not scale out. So yeah, I think this is a, that's a reasonable size. It makes sense for a Solana killer. I think what we can gather from this main page is that they're going to probably select validator nodes from people who are running their validator node on the test net. So it increases your chances exponentially if you're running a validator node on the test net to go ahead and be able to eligible to be a validator on the main net when they go ahead and open up the doors. Let's go ahead and talk about running a validator node on the test net and sort of what the requirements are for the uh, validator node hardware requirements. You can see here the uh, minimal requirements, the CPU, uh, you need at least four cores. So that's not too bad. I mean, that's pretty much a Raspberry Pi and I definitely wouldn't recommend that for this setup. Uh, LF0 is a scaled up blockchain, so definitely not that, but you can. Uh, this is actually about the an average an average setup for an Intel Nook, um, but you can also get a nice you know a nice server setup, of course. Now Intel Nooks do have a low, much lower power requirement, which is nice when you're going ahead and setting it to the data center. Now the RAM requirements are 16 gigabytes, one terabyte of NVMe SSD. So I think this is a six uh, mega, megabits gigabits per second uh, sort of storage. Uh, storage solution. I don't think SSD or MVM SSD, it doesn't matter. As long as you have that, you know, full capacity of the SATA, then it's then not a big deal. The network requires 25 plus megabits per second. So certain certain USB ISPs or data centers, I should say, they have start off with uh, 10 megabits per second. So you might have to upgrade to uh, 25 or even 100 megabits per second. Uh, that's pretty average for a data center. 100 megabits isn't that bad. Um, for AWS, that's a C5 large. For GCP, it's a, for Google Cloud, it's a C2 standard. Um, anyways, in Azure, it's an F4S. So I wouldn't recommend exactly getting one of these different, these three different, uh, you know, cloud providers. I would actually just buy the server yourself if you can't afford it and then send that to a green Echo data center. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, the recommended requirements. This will probably be the requirements in about two or three years, I'm guessing, when Aleph Zero becomes more widely used. They're going to have much higher requirements. So 32 gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes NVMe SSD and 100 megabits per second network. So yeah, I think this is pretty average. It's not too too crazy specs. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the, uh, the cloud setup. You can do this if you want, but I still recommend getting a dedicated piece of hardware if you can. So yeah, for oh sorry for the uh, for the recommended setup for the for the node, the CPU requirements is at least eight cores. So this is pretty much in line with an Intel Nook, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM. You can do all this on an Intel Nook, and that would cost you about two thousand dollars, I think. So it's not bad. 
And how to become a validator. This is very important to read this. Soon enough, we'll announce several additions of the incentivized test net that will be supported with a call for validators. The mechanic will be quite simple. We'll need you to register and download a Linux installation script. Be on the lookout for communications. So they did open up the communications in the Discord chat, and you can register, and I'll talk about the setting up the testnet validator node next. So, yep, yeah, like it says here, with the launch of Testnet, we're closer ever to achieving our goal of deploying a public blockchain that allows enterprises to fulfill their privacy and security requirements while leveraging the full benefits of a scalable, flexible, decentralized ecosystem. We are grateful to our community's ongoing support and understanding, and we're continuously working to ensure the delivery of the highest quality technology via peer-reviewed scientific research and external audits provided by the best firms in the industry. So, yeah, that that's basically the word from the co-founder, Antoni Zolkiak. Sorry if I destroyed your name. So let's go ahead and jump right into the validator node setup here. Um, go ahead. You basically download the node. It's a very simple process. You just download it here, Git. Just remember this file is about 51 gigabytes right now. So make sure you have that one terabyte at least of storage. And as of right now with this Docker file, you cannot, uh, you cannot mount this onto your external storage unless you're really, really affluent with Docker. Uh, you're going to have to make sure that your main hard disk is at least one terabyte or somehow figure out how to point it to your external storage if your external storage is the one that has the most space on it. So yeah, you can see here it's pretty easy to set up. It takes a long time to download, even with a 100 megabit connection, it takes quite a bit to download. Uh, but it's very simple. You just kind of download it and then it runs it automatically. And from there, you can verify your setup. Pretty easy. And you can make sure that the endpoint, the RPC calls working and all that stuff, all that good stuff. Okay. And the rest of this, uh, you can go and read through for yourself. Nothing too important. Um, building from sources is also is also a really good idea if you're using an external hard drive. So I recommend doing this, like I said, if you're using an external hard drive. But make sure you have that at least six uh, gigabits per second uh, connection SATA cable, not some you know, it's just not just like an HD uh, hard hard drive because Alice Zero has a high spec requirements for the hard disk. Okay. So yep, there are two choices. Basically, you can run the bot. You can uh, you can you can download from you build from the source and then download the database file, or you can go ahead and use the Docker file, which is what we ended up doing. So from there, in order to go ahead and uh, register to be a validator on the on the testnet, you do need to actually kind of to get testnet out of zero tokens. You actually need to register on the website. Uh, you can see here. Aleph Zero, validators, alephzero.org. You can register on this website and they have a link straight there from here, from their Aleph Zero documentation. So it's pretty easy. Just click on the form and it'll take you to the page to sign up to be a validator node. So yeah, let me guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments about these specs and everything. I think these specs are quite, you know, average for a blockchain, especially something that's trying to compete with Solana. This is a very fair uh, spec requirement, I believe, but I think even uh, 12, 12 CPU, 12 core CPUs or 16 core CPUs could be possible in the future. Yeah, like I said, just let me know in the comments. I'm really curious as to why they only chose eight cores as the the recommended setup for this and not like 16 cores because it seems rather small for a Solana competitor. Okay, so that from there, uh, when you register, you have to actually give them your peer ID. You can see here, uh, it's pretty easy to do. You just look at your Docker logs, and then it'll give you the peer ID. So pretty simple. You use this, and then you copy and paste this into the validator, the form right here, and that's it. And if you want to go ahead and see your node to make sure it's connected to all the peers and everything, you can see here on the telemetry polkadot.io website, you can see all the different nodes. It looks like they have about 50 nodes right now. So yeah, quite a bit. Um, they have some, look, even in Hanoi, wow, okay. Melbourne, so it's all around the world, a lot of nodes running, so it's very exciting. Anyways, that's it for the video today. I really hope that helped you guys out. I'm really excited for Alpha Zero to see what they're gonna push out in the future. Peace out, guys, have a great day. Bro, we need to pop it. Everybody, go to Twitter. And the hashtag the things pump it, you know, pump it real good. We need the good pump. Everybody deserves a nice Tezos pump.